Okay, here it is. Color scheme designer dot com. It goes to P A L E T T O N. I can never remember that. It's so much easier for me to remember color scheme designer. What was it? P A L L E what? T T O N. E E T T O N dot com. There's only one L. Oh, there's only one L. Thank you. P A L E T T O N. Okay. Here's how it works. Again, I'm going to choose the different options right here for the different colors. Okay, you got your monochrome, what we're in right now. You got your triad, which means, or no, is this adjacent colors. This is the triad. This is triad four colors, or T, 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 tread, tread. And then four stellates. I don't know. You can choose either one of these. Okay. Boy, it's pretty ugly though over here. So I chose some really nice colors, and here's how I did it for my, my first time that I did it. I used these, um, the adjacent one. I started moving them around. My wife kind of likes these kind of blue, um, blue, bluish hues. But in the middle here, once you choose kind of the, the hue out here, this is the hue out here, you can start moving the middle around, and I don't like very saturated colors, all right? If you're over here, look at this. So look at, look, you know, looking at something like that on a web page is going to make my eyes go crazy, okay? Again, I'm moving the little circles in the middle, the little circles in the middle. So after I choose kind of the hue, I wanted, again, she, she likes the kind of blue and yellowish and kind of warm here. You can move them around if you want. Uh, you, I move the inside ones to give me more of a less. Um, I don't know why. I'm going to use. How about we? Use, what? <coughs> what did I, use? I had such nice colors my first time. I don't know why uh, this is not making the colors that I want? How do I unlock? Hold Shift to move shades individually. There we go. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. I was really having such nice colors the first time I did this. Joe, what, what I don't understand the colors. So, what, what's uh, when you move on outside and change? What's the relationship? This is the hue. What kind of hue relate to the center? Hue is color. The inside is the shade from white to black. So you have different shades of color. So no matter, let's say you have this one selected or this one selected. This is just the, the shade inside here. The shade. Watch when I move the shade. You see the, 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 the tints of these colors change. Do you understand? Or you could just use a monocone if you want. Well, that's kind of boring. I don't know. I chose such nice colors last time. I'm not doing very good. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this this is more about what I wanted. I want this to be a little bit more yellow. This one to be orange. This one to be blue. That's somewhat. I, I still I'm I'm not being able to find the colors that I liked. I I picked such nice colors yesterday when I was doing this. Such nice colors. That's a little better. I still don't have the yellow that I want. That's all right. You can always adjust them once you get them in Dreamweaver anyways. I just was trying to get it close up. Uh, this is a little better. Once you choose the color. So choose some colors that you like. You can always adjust them later. It doesn't matter. Just choose them. Did you choose some colors? Did you have mono?
Okay, so we'll save these. We save the colors. We're going to save an HTML file. And we're going to put it in our folder that we've downloaded, okay? To save it, we go underneath. Table and export in the lower right corner. Do you see where it says tables and export? If you click on that, it'll bring up a window. It's showing you again, you got all the different values. You got your RGB value, you have your your uh, hexadecimal value and things like that. Next I'm going to say as HTML right here. Do you see the first option in the upper right corner? Uh, in the lower right corner, it should say tables and export, I think. So. Oh, right. Lower right corner. And it gives you this. Then you click on, I'm going to say, as HTML. It gives you this look. Now I'm going to save this as, and make sure you choose the right option. Watch the format I choose it in. Make sure you choose it as a plain HTML, not a complete web page. Save it as a plain HTML. Watch how I do this. You go under File, Save Page As, File, Save Page As. I'm going to go to my folder. I have mine on my desktop. I know you know where yours is. Mine is called Start Ceramics 2. I think that's what it's called. If I open that up, I'm going to save it in there. I'm going to call it color palette and uh, right here where it says format choose HTML only don't choose web page complete it will it, it won't work right the technique I'm using is I save as web page HTML only yes I always use Firefox um, Safari, I don't know. Here we go. Let's go see. Void f file, save as, web archive, page source, maybe. Maybe page source. No, I don't know. I don't know. Share, export as PDF, save as. Yeah, I don't know about Safari here. Web Archive. I, I don't know about Safari. I'm sorry. Export, share, save as. I don't know. Web archive, page source. Saves only the source text of the page. That's not going to help you. I don't know. Use use Firefox if you can. How can I do that? I can, you can just copy the address, copy, and then go to Firefox and paste it. Right now, you know, I don't know. Here, you, right here's the link. You can copy this link right here. Here's the link right here. Copy this and paste it into. Once I'm done doing that, I'm going to use Photoshop like I told you. You should have Photoshop in your dock. That was the cooler. That was the other one. Yeah, cooler. K U L E R. I think it's Adobe a product. If you just type in cooler, you'll get there. There's a way to bring the cooler into Dreamweaver. I've been struggling with that because the way that they do it in the older version is different than the way that they do it in the newer version. Welcome to Dreamweaver world. So I'm trying to figure out how to explain it to you. But let's just go with this way for right now.
So in Photoshop, again, we're going to use a picture of my wife on the page. So there should be one inside of the folder that I gave you. I believe there's one in there. Let's see. It should be, um, uh, it should say portrait. Nice photo in Tahoe. You got the ocean or the lake in the background. You got a nice blue sky. Of course, we don't want the whole kind of thing. We're going to crop it, right? Again, this is a portrait for the page. The, it's going to be more of a, this than that, right? So we have to crop it like this. Now you can use you could use a ratio to crop it, or yes. Is it not in the folder I gave you? Fabulous photo for our artist, and we want to crop it. Again, the crop tool is this one. If you do not see it in your tool palette, it might be underneath the perspective crop tool, the slice tool, or the slice, slice, slice tool. But it's called the crop tool. It might be, it's the fourth one down, fifth one down. Once I type that in, I can put numbers up here. Again, I'm going to do 400 pixels by 300 pixels. Oh, no, I want to do that opposite. 300 pixels by 400. That's what I want. So 300 pixels by 400, and then you can just move the image around. You can shrink it down if you want. Shrink it down, get rid of some of the sky. Remember, leave some space. There's a reason why there's three kind of uh, the, the crosshairs are there, right? See, they make it easy for you. The rule of thirds. Put the eyes right there at the top of top of the third one, right? And the little space over here because she's looking that way, right? Remember that from your photography class or your Photoshop class. So again, when you're cropping, I should be around this part and extra space on this side because she's looking that way. Balance. Balance. When you're done cropping, if you hit the move tool, this one right here, it'll crop it'll ask you, do you want to crop it? So click on the move tool and say crop. Boom. Might look tiny, that's all right. You can zoom in, Command Plus, Command Plus, Command Plus, Command Plus. You can see it's not too bad a photo still. It's still a decent photo. You want to save this portrait as a PNG or JPEG or GIF, of course. What, why would you save them all differently? Well, it just depends on what you want to do. The advantages, there's advantages of all the different file formats. Of course, the advantage of a PNG is you can attach a color palette to the PNG, which helps with rendering. You can have a profile that goes with it. Uh, JPEG, of course, is the most universal. And, uh, and a GIF wouldn't be best here because the GIF is um, uh, only eight, 256 colors or less. Right? So if I, if I was to make it a GIF, it would turn out kind of fuzzy. So let's look at the Save As palette in Photoshop. I'm going to go under File, Save for Web and Device. File, Save for Web. So file, Save for Web. Again, in the Save for Web window, you have your options up here. You got your GIF. Notice when I save as a GIF, it gets dithered. The term dither is used to describe when there is a color table. This is called a color lookup table. When you save as a GIF, it's only 256 colors or less. It's an 8-bit image, which is an 8-bit image. This is 256 colors or less. Okay, You can even go less than 256, and you see if you even dither even more, dither more, but hey, it'll be a smaller file. Back in the early days of the Internet, we used to look at images that looked like that. Does anybody remember the days the Internet looked like that? Nowadays we have. So this is referred to as dithering, so you should know that term. What is dithering? Well, that's where the computer is mixing colors, dots of colors, to make it look like a different color. See, if I zoom out, you see, eh, you know, it's got a little reds and greens down here and a little grays to make it look kind of like a shadow here, right? 
So GIF is probably not the best option for a photograph. Okay, JPEG would be a much better option. Notice it's only 25.92 kilobytes. See it right there. High quality means it's not. It's it's. You see the quality is at 60. You can go up or down. What would the quality slider do? Well, the quality slider gives it less blurry or more blurry. The more blurry it gets, uh, and I'll show you blocky. See if you zoom in. You can see it's kind of blocky. It's the way that the JPEG compression works. The way the JPEG compression works is it removes data by combining eight pixel squares together. So it finds eight pixels. That's why it's kind of blocky here. If you look right around it, right here, you see it's really kind of blocky. What it's doing is it's trying to combine pixels together into bigger pixels, if you can think about it that way. And that's where the blocky. If you turn the quality up, you're going to get less blocky but a bigger file. So you got to balance, see how the quality is a little better, but look, it was 25 kilobytes, now it's 56 kilobytes, or 65 kilobytes. So, you know, your balance, say, hey, quality and compression, compression and quality. Uh, if this is for a cell phone, I might try and, you know, it's okay if it's a little blurry, I'm going to go to 69 there. 32 kilobytes, hey, that's okay. It's a lot, it's half of what it was just a little bit ago. So, you know, you've got to make decisions when you are compressing your photos for your web page. Are you balancing quality compared to file size and download speed? It's okay on people that have their Comcast or their T1 line at home, right? But, you know, everybody with our little G3 phone. So keep that in mind. Progressive, I usually leave off. That is an old option that we used to have when you would look at a web page. If you remember the days of dial up modems, you used to look at a photo and it would be blurry and get clear, clear, clear as it downloaded. Anybody remember those days? Okay, those days, yeah, that's what progressive is. If you check that box, it would allow that to happen. Now, we don't really do that anymore, and that kind of interferes a little bit with the um, downloading of the image, and I turn that off. Don't use that. What's that? When you're on Google Image and you click on something. Yeah, it still does that in Google Image, yeah. I think they do it, though, to the image. It's not an option that you choose. They're doing that. That's an option that Google does. I don't think that you, that's something you do. And now they have embed color profile. Do you see that? Adds to the file size. What does that do? Well, it adds a color profile to help. Um, it's, that's a long discussion. Um, there's a thing called an ICC profile which is a um, palette that you can attach to a graphic which allows the gra that goes along with the graphic um, that helps the graphic render properly or more more appropriately print properly Photoshop class um, then of course you have your PNG 8 Kind of looks like the the GIF, doesn't it? Eight PNG twenty four looks more like the JPEG. Notice the PNG twenty four though. Look how big it is. One hundred ninety two point three kilobytes. Woo! Which one was the smaller one? JPEG. JPEG, right? So you know, uh, as far as size, I would use JPEG at this. You might want to put the color profile in there when you're done. Uh, if your dock is in the way, my dock is in my way. Let me hide my dock. I can hit save. I'm going to go to my folder that I opened it from and I'm going to call it portrait cropped. So it's the cropped one. I'm going to leave the original one. I always leave the original one because you might need to go back and adjust it later, right? You don't want to have to recreate something if you delete, you know, crop it and then you're all going to be great. Okay, let's talk about that duotone. Okay, so. I might um, go back to my palette, and I, I failed to open and, and make a decision, but if I go back to my um, folder that I was in, um, let me see my color palette. Hold on. Let me look at my color palette. Oh, here's my color palette. So what I was talking about earlier was, you know, the whole rage of kind of web design today is to kind of make your images um, uh, kind of look like Instagram kind of look. And maybe you could, you know, instead of using a plain black and white image, you would use something called duotone. Okay, so uh, I'm going to choose one of my colors here, one of my blues that I'm going to use in my palette. I'm going to use one of these blues for my navigational bar, so I'm going to write it down here. So I'm going to write one of my uh, numbers down here. 
what number I'm writing down is a hexadecimal value. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can choose whatever color you want inside of, of, of Photoshop. But in this case, what I'm trying to say is I'm going to use one of these colors in, in my design, and I'm going to kind of apply that color as part of my design by using what's called a duotone. To do that, I'm going to go back to Photoshop. And the first option to making a duotone is to remove the color completely by making it grayscale. To remove the color completely to make it a grayscale is under Image, Mode, Grayscale. Image, Mode, Grayscale. Turns your image into a, yeah, discard color information. Oh, she's black and white now. Now, of course, you know, black and white is all nice. It's cool to look at black and white photos. We got our Ansel Adams. We got our, you know, things like that. But, uh, you know, to make it relate maybe to the colors of my design, I might add a duotone. To add a duotone is underneath image, mode, duotone. Inside the duotone options, you'll notice there is a monochrome right here. I'm going to change monochrome to duotone. In the duotone option, you'll see there's a big white area right here for my second color. If I click on that, it'll give me my options, and I can type in my hexadecimal value that I wrote down from my palette. Or you can choose whatever color you want. There's my blue. Notice how the blue then is applied to the image. You can adjust the image by using a curve so you can apply the blue in certain parts of it using a curve the curve relates to the white area at the top and the black area or white to black here so there's ways to adjust it when you're done, you hit OK. Oh, I have to give it an ink name, Blue. How about that? Blue. OK, and I'm going to save that. I'm going to save that as a JPEG again under File, Save for Web. And I'm going to use JPEG again. And in this case, I'm going to give it a different name. We'll call it Portrait Duo for Duotone. And so that is one way that you can make graphics that relate to your color palette. Did everybody see how to do that? Okay, so in Dreamweaver, I'm going to do the same thing I always do. Site. New site. Let's give it a name. I call mine Ceramic Site. Again, in this window, there's local site folder. I'm going to click on the folder right here. Right here's the folder. I'm going to go to the desktop and choose my Start Ceramics 2. Start Ceramics 2 and hit Choose and hit Save. So again, doing the same thing we do every time. The same thing we do every time. Next, I'm going to start some new files by going under File New. Again, just like we were before, we're going to use the Fluid Grid Layout. I kind of used, um, I don't know, we have 10, 8, and 4. 
that we used last time. You can adjust these options later on. In fact, I'm going to show you how to adjust them later in the code, in the code itself, instead of using this. So, I know we're, um, you know, you can adjust these later on. I'm going to change the desktop one to 12, though. It might be cool. It might be cool to 12. 12? Yeah. 12 is yeah. fine. It's default. Default. Okay, that's fine. But I did change this to a small column with this one. Um, so again, the first one it's going to ask you to save is the CSS file. So as soon as you hit Create, it's going to ask you for the CSS, and you could call it Fluid Grid or My Style if you want. My Style. I, I was getting away from dealing with the Fluid Grid because it was making me mad. So I just started calling it My Style. So it was making me mad. Then again, the first thing you should do is save your file by going under File, Save As, and uh, again, um, last time we were calling it Profile, maybe we'll do it again. How about that? I guess I'll do it again, even though it made me mad. And then, of course, it wants to save a variety of other files. Just hit OK. Yeah, No, you can use file save as. No, I mean if you don't do it up front and start doing designing, you lose some stuff. You mean the save compared yeah, to the you save, save as? It right now. Uh, well, the problem that you run into if you don't save it right away is you're linking things, so those links will get lost. They it, it gives you problems. Yeah, it's, it's, I think that's what I was trying to figure out. Yeah, you will. Uh, it's best to just save right away. Okay, again, this is kind of the same madness that we had last time. Uh, again, you can give your project a title if you want instead of calling it untitled. I'm going to use my wife's name. So, you should never leave your page untitled. We already talked about that, hopefully. Then uh, I'm in split view right now. If you want to be in all design view, again, you have your design. We have our cell phone or tablet and computer. Now, all three of them are going to have the same kind of background as well as the same logo in the upper corner. So let's let's do the the. the the background first. So in this case, uh, the first one I'm going to deal with, let me keep this on, uh, let me get rid of this. Before I even insert anything or do anything else, I'm going to go to where it says body down here. Body under global, it should say. Body under global. Again, I have, I'm, I'm going to try and explain what I have selected. I have the cell phone one selected, mobile site selected, and I, body should show up over here as one of the selectors. See where it says body right there? And it should, when I roll over, it says body under global. Do you see that? No. No? How about clicking on, do you have this selected here? Maybe. No, now I got div one selected. Okay. You don't have that? How about global? No. Um, my style, bowler plate style, all source, global. Boilerplate, body maybe, global, I don't know. Now it's, and now it's totally different, but try and find the body if you can. Is it in my style? No, it's in the boilerplate one. Try the boilerplate one, not my style. 
boilerplate body. I'm going to go down to where it says background and where it says background image um, right here where it says URL right here background image you can click here to get there too background background image there should be one that looks like it should say background top Do you see one that says background top in your folder okay now it looks crazy let's don't worry about it don't worry about it we're going to go to where the options are down here. There's a lot of options for a background. There's a lot of options for a background. The option I want is this one right here where it says repeat X. Repeat X. It's the one I want. The one that says repeat X. Repeat X. So I just want the, the little graphic that will go across the top of each and every page. And you see like a little black to blue kind of glow at the top of the page. I'm going to leave this fluid grid element in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the text. Oh, no, I don't want to delete. If you delete, it'll all go away. Please don't do that. Um, how do I want to do that? How about we... Jeff, that is not the fluid. There's two objects. That's a div tag. Yeah, I know. I'm going to I'm going to keep I'm going to keep that fluid this one. The grid container. I don't know. First time I did it, I used this and it was fine. I left this, didn't I? Is that what I did? I have to remember. Oh, this is div 1. Yeah. Um, let me look at my original one. Hold on. This is called div 1. Let me look at my original one. Again, I did delete um I did delete that one um grid the the pre-made div and I deleted that and put in the header option, a div header by going under the insert um div and then called it ID header. So see if you can get to that point and then I'm gonna talk about the um image. So So if we look at our sample that I've already made, let's look. So I'm not going to worry. I'm going to use kind of a scalable logo, as you can see here. Look at the logo here, scale. See the scalable logo? Most people, though, don't go like this with their web page. Okay? You're either going to come to your web page like a cell phone like that, or you're going to come to the page with a with the um, iPad like that or you're gonna come to the page with a computer like that okay so I know it looks like the the image is scaling um, but most people are not gonna see it go like that what's more important is it's the right size when the people go there okay so again you'll notice I have a scalable image for the logo and I'm gonna show you how I made that this is for the iPad computer screen iPad cell phone okay so how did I do that this is done by using background image of the header div background image of the header div let's get to that so I'm gonna bring up the CSS designer here um, I'm going to click inside the header and um, I'm going to hit the plus button. Oh, it's already in there. There's a header already there. So I, I don't know how I got to the header there. How did I get to the header? You're going to have three different options. You're going to have one for the cell phone, one for the computer, and one for the... Um... So you're on the wrong one. Yeah, I know I am. I can see that. How about if we go to global? That's not going to help. Um, this one is how about if we click on the cell phone one no 
Still not the right one. See, this one is still there. I don't know how to get to the cell phone one. There you go. Now you're on the cell phone one. Click on this then. I don't know. Sometimes you have to click off it and click on it. I don't know why. I don't know why either. But then it, it finally. So it's really subtle, everyone, but you have to make sure that the things on the left have the right things connected. Yeah, the global. Sometimes if you're updating the wrong attributes, uh -huh. and then you're like, why isn't it working? Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I don't have an answer to how to make it easier than that. So again, it's a, it's, see how it's global here now? This is bold. That should be the cell phone one. Global bold. Okay, let's look at putting the logo in. Again, the logo is going to be a background image. I'm going to scroll down to where the background image is, just like we did the background image before, right? Remember background image for the body tag? I'm going to go to where it said enter path, and you want to choose banner PNG, not PSD, banner PNG. Hit open. Now, it's not going to fit in there. It's not going to fit in there. Don't worry about it yet. Don't worry about it yet. Then I'm going to go down to where it says background repeat, and I'm going to say no repeat. No repeat. So again, it should say URL banner PNG, background repeat, no repeat. And then for the position, I used 80%, um, I think, for the cell phone one. Oh, no, maybe that's wrong. Wait. Is yours turned into a JPEG? Hmm? Is yours turned into a JPEG? Yeah. Okay. No, it's, it used the one that says PNG. I used the PNG and then it changed it to a JPEG. Hmm. Mm. It shouldn't it should use the PNG, not PSD, PNG. Oh, maybe I use PSD. Um, hold on, I can't remember oh, which options I used here. Hold on, oh, and how I made it big. I know I gave it a percentage here. Um, and I moved it down using the margin. I moved it down using, so it's not up against the blue. So it's not up against the blue because I wanted it to be below the blue. And then I gave it a padding to make it bigger. Hold on, I'm thinking of how I did this. And then I scaled it. Hold on, I will, I will explain in a minute after I remember how I did it, okay? We get to that point, and then I get a background size, and I used a percentage, and I told it to be seventy percent. Was it seventy percent? No, I guess it was smaller than seventy percent. No, I don't remember how I sized it. Oh, I'm in body. Am I in body? How did I get the body? How did I get the body? Hold on. Hold on. I'm I'm not in the right CSS now. I'm, I lost it. There we go. Hold on. Did I not do it right? Hold on. In there. Oh, I was doing that. I don't know, somehow I was able to scale it down in there. But it doesn't seem to be working. No. Maybe it works when you do a test. 
Yeah, I don't know. I was able to scale it down. I had it working, and it did work at one point in my life. Oh, yeah, look how tiny it is now. Okay, so it's just not showing you. It's not, it's not visually telling you. I guess maybe if you get a live view. There you go. Live view will tell you what it looks like. There we go. Use live view. There we go. Okay, I think I can explain now. Yeah, I think I had it at 80%. 80%. 80%. So here, here's the settings I have. Here's the settings I have. I still have the header. I'm still using the cell phone. Cell phone. Cell phone. Um, I have a background image, 80% auto, no repeat. And then I gave it some margin so it's down from the blue from the blue background see the blue background I moved it down by using margin top of nine pixels or somewhere around there and then I gave it a padding of like 51 pixels high and then you can delete the text inside there if you want if I can get if I can oh I'm in live view that's why so in normal view you're not gonna see it correctly you know you, shows you correctly in live view but then that still doesn't look right maybe give it a little bit more padding there we go there we go more padding there we go padding is the stuff outside of the container outside inside the container inside the, image. inside the container yeah So see if you can make that work. I know it was difficult. So I'm going to go to the iPad option down here. Down here, iPad option right here. You notice the logo gets cut off, right? So here's what you need to do. Here's what you need to do. You need to go back to the CSS properties. Make sure you got the header selected for the iPad. Go down to where the... URL is for the image and you need to load the image in again you have to load the image in again sorry to say but this is how I found out how to do it you need to load the image in again then you need to go and do all the settings again no repeat but this time I used I think 50 percent for this you didn't have to change the height and width though you didn't have to go and do this stuff again, the margin and stuff. That's that's universal. But for some reason, it's still not going small. And I don't know why. Hold on. Maybe I need to go smaller than 50%. You're in position, not size. Oh, I'm in position. Thank you. I need to go here. 50%. There we go. That looks better. So, yeah, background size, 50%. So, again, for the iPad one, again, iPad here. I chose the image again. I sent this to 50% and then said no repeat. Then I did the same thing for the computer one. I go to the computer one. Go all the way over here to the computer one. Choose the path for that one. I'm going to go again. Choose the background image again. Choose the background image again. Then I went to uh, size for that. or oh, No repeat. And then change the size of that one to uh, I think I used 70% um, on that one. Or maybe less. Maybe a little bit less. No? Thirty nine per cent. So I saved all, and then by changing 
for each one of them, my background actually tended to work right. So here's the cell phone, iPad, and then we'll talk about cutting the computer off. There's the cell phone, iPad. I don't know. My first sample looked a little better. So go and try and change it for each one. Oh, son of a bitch. Going into this 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 Safari. I do not like Safari. I do not like you, Safari. It should be, you know, just like in in in, in uh, Dr. Seuss. I do not like Safari with ham on top. Okay, so the last thing we need to do for the logo is watch this. As it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, we want it to stop growing. See how it stops growing? Stops growing. Stops growing right about here. See that? Because right now, if you preview um, this one, as I, get, as I get bigger, do you see how it gets cut off? It grows and grows and then gets cut off. You want it to kind of stop there. How we do that is by changing the max width, the max width. Now the only way I was able to change the max width was to, um, I did it by hand. I didn't, I couldn't figure out how to change it in the toolbar or using the tools of Dreamweaver. So again, if you, if you did what I told you, notice as you get way too big, it starts, look how it see, sees how it gets cut off. So what I want to do is, is in the program, what I did was in the program, I went to the code view, went to my CSS style, I went to the grid container for the, for the, um, for the desktop. If you look under my style, the one that we made, my style here, and you're looking at there, you'll notice there's one that says desktop layout, max of 1232. I went and changed that to 960, 970, I'm sorry, I put 970 in there. Okay, I put 970 as the max width, and then I saved all, and then I previewed, and Oh, it gets a little bit too big right there. I might need to change the size, but you can see it doesn't have the problem that you had before. See, because what it's doing is it's maxing out the width of the entire layout to 97. So the 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 self the the, the desktop one's going to be 970 pixels wide basically. I I found the 1230 to be kind of wide. Um, so you could adjust things again by hand. Um, this one maybe go down to three, 380 here. Let's see if that fixed it. Oh, it's cut off just a little bit. So again, this would be computer or the cell phone. This would be the iPad and this would be the computer. after the header here and I went insert div and I made an ID and I called it my or main nav so I made up my own words instead of using the navigational option I found that easier to use my own ID than to use the pre-made HTML5 I don't know why and again, I hit OK. And this time again, instead of using the design view, I'm going to remove the text that's in there.
and I'm going to type in a, a UL. I mean, we could simply type it in easier if you want. Or if you want to use the Dreamweaver tools, you could go back to Design View and, and then go um, click on the, in the Properties window, click on the Unordered List and type in your navigational bar. Call in mine pottery uh, events bio and home. So again, it might be easier to do it in the code view. It might be easier just to Type this in right there like that. I don't know. You can do it either way. But this is how I made the navigational bar that I was working on. A couple things with the navigational bar, of course, is you have an ID already called main nav. I know it has a class of fluid, just leave that alone but then main nav and then you have a UL and then the LI again you need to make these a link you can either make them a link but in design view by highlighting it going to the properties window and putting a pound sign inside of the link option highlight the text pound sign highlight the text pound sign highlight the text pound sign Then to do the CSS, I kind of did like we did last time. I did the CSS kind of the way we did it last time. Where I started with the cell phone one. I had my cursor inside there. Notice how it automatically brings up a UL and OL because it's under global UL that's why I made my own ID I made my own ID so that I could adjust these without having to adjust everything so I'll show you what I mean I can't I can't I can't move this away why, why is it stuck there oh jeez there we go so if I click inside here, I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. I'm going to hit the Add Selector option. And what I did was I deleted the A and LI and just went to the UL. Now here's the problem. If you click off or hit Tab on the keyboard, it won't take effect. So the only way that I was able to remove the A and the LI was to delete it there like that. Then I clicked over here when I was done and it kept it. But if I did anything like hit tab or hit return or click anywhere over here, it would disappear. So the only way I was able to get it to work was to remove that stuff. And then again, remember the LI, U, the UL, how that works is you can go down to the list type and choose none for the bullet and then go all the way up to the very top for to get rid of the space and change the display of inline and it goes over then I simply went through and did the same thing again so all I needed to do was this for the UL the next one that I was gonna do was of course the the add selector again I'm gonna leave the LI and A there this time I leave it there but don't click don't hit tab don't do anything else just click your mouse over here somewhere and there and then it kept it there it kept it there then again for the same LI A I use the same display as a block if you remember doing that remember block and then I gave my my text 
you might want to give a little padding on top and bottom. I just give a little bit of padding top and bottom, just a little bit maybe. Four is a little much. How about we put two and two? That just gives some space around the edges. And then, of course, you can float right and put some next to each other. And then for the size at the very top, for the width, I'm doing, since there's four of them, since there's four of them, I use 25%, 25%. That spreads them out all the way across. And then, so block 25%. And then I give it a, I give the font a color. I'm going to use a nice light color for my font. And then font family, I'm going to choose a font. I'm going to center align my text and my button right there, center line. Then I, I'm going to choose no underline, no underline at all. No underline. So, I know it's white and you can't see it, that's okay. We're going to give it a background color. Now, when I give it a background color, when I give it a background color, I wanted to choose my colors from my palette. And I, I haven't been able to show you how to make this palette yet because we kind of ran out of time. So let me just let me just choose some colors for now. I don't know. I'll have to show you how to do that. I'm going to choose some colors. So again, I chose a color for the background. So all I'm doing is changing the U-L-L-I-A. U-L-L-I-A. And there's a whole bunch of options you might want to choose. Remember, we were trying to use some underline. I'm not going to do that here. But for the, um, um, you know, there's a whole bunch of options that you can choose for your font and things like that. Um, word spacing. Um, things like that. If you wanted a box around there, again, if you add a border though, it tends to mess up the percentages and you might have to change that to a lower percentage. But if you look at what you have, oh, you might want to add a, a line on the edge. I found that to help um, differentiate. So instead of having a line all the way around, just like we did with the line along the bottom, if you're doing um, for at least for the right now for for this one, which right now is the general. So let's 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 see what we got right now. So I have cell phone, I have iPad, I have computer, iPad, cell phone. You know, cell phone doesn't look quite right, does it? I'm going to have to adjust the logo in there. But that's what I have so far, again, to make the navigational bar. I'm going to try real quick to make a, um, make a rollover effect. I'm going to try to make a rollover effect. How did I do that last time? Uh, by duplicating this one. And that never works for me. I know it's there somewhere, I just don't know where it went. And, and, and it doesn't seem to duplicate. But it does duplicate in the code. So when I right click and say duplicate, it does duplicate it, but it doesn't show it to me and I don't know why. I don't know why. So if I go to the boilerplate and I look, You'll see here is the, here it is. Let me see. And here it is twice. See, it did duplicate it right here, maybe. Well, no, it, did, it didn't duplicate it. I don't know. So, yeah, there it is. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know how to do the rollover effect right now. I don't. But what I'm going to try and do is get it to be stacked in the cell phone version. 
What I'm going to try and do is get it stacked in the cell phone version. So let me try that. Well, not in the cell phone version. I guess that's not that's not the best way to go about it. Um, what do we got? Yeah, you got that. No, that's not going to work. Yeah, I just don't know if I can make it work using the tools of the program. I know what I wanted to do, I just don't know if I can do it. Let me see if I can try here. See, I just don't know how to make it. I, I don't know. Um, So it looks like you just have to put all the settings in again. I couldn't I couldn't figure out how to duplicate. I don't know. can't undo. There's no undo. Um, damn. There's no undo. Okay, let me do it again. So I'm in the computer version. This one. And I want to hit click inside first. Why can't I do this? I don't know why it won't let me do this. I don't know what this is telling me. Okay, I'm just going to leave it like it is for now. That's not what I want. Shit.
No, I don't want float left. I want to clear. Oh. 100%. So in the cell phone one, I want 100% with no float, but it's not doing it. So I don't know. I guess I have to do this all by hand. There's no way the tools can do it. I, don't, I just don't know. I, I can't get it to do what I want it to do. So I'm just going to type it in by hand. I want 100% with, with uh, no float. No float. That's what I want. So I don't know. I could use the try and use the tools all day long if I want. It still didn't work. Yeah, it did work. I had to do it by hand. I couldn't figure out how to use the tools, but this is what I want. I want in the cell phone the buttons to be on top of each other, but in there I wanted it to be next to each other. Do that. So I I couldn't do it in this window. I, I and I got way too many. Look at look at all these. I, I I could not do it in this window. The only way I was able to do it is to go into code and and do it. So I don't know. So that's what I wanted. Then uh, you know what? I'm just gonna do everything in code view. I I, I can't use the tools because they're just they're just useless. I, I don't know. So for this one, so for this one, I want a border. I want the border bottom. I'm going to do a border bottom of white. border bottom thin so I don't know I might need to copy what I just did here and place it in this one yeah I don't know I'm I'm just putting it here because that's what it looks like it needs to go there too. I don't know. Oh. See, I, it's not giving me my border bottom. I wanted a white line to go through. I think I need to add more. Hold on. Hold on. So, I wanted a white line, bottom color, thin, and I need to give it a style. That's why it's not it needs a style solid. So here we go, style. Nah. I don't want to do that. Oh. No. So it needs a it needs a it needs a style in order to work. Okay, now let me see. There we go. Now I have a white line that goes underneath each one. Looks good for a cell phone. Oh, doesn't look quite right there because the border is interfering with the width of the there. But they shouldn't have a border here. So that's why I don't know why it's inheriting that. I guess you would have to turn the border off for the iPad and the computer. So in this case, if I can figure out how to choose those, I don't know. Let me see if I can choose them. For the iPad, I want to border bottom, no, border, border style of none. There we go. No, but maybe I want a border on the side. But that'll mess it up too. 
if I say none, none, none there, none, 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 it still doesn't look like it works. Let me see. How about for the computer? Well, that seemed to work fine. Let me try that. Now it works. There we go. So now I got a white line under each navigational bar. So that works. Still haven't had a rollover effect. I would probably do that in a code view. And it's 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 virtually going to be impossible to do that. I guess some other way. I really don't know how to do it with the tools. I'm just going to duplicate this and give myself a hover like that. Oh, spell it right. And let me duplicate it again down here for the print. I don't know why, but I'm just going to do it down here for the print. And then uh, for the background color, I don't know. Just to make my life easier, I might just give it what I know. 33CCFF. How about that? My favorite light sky blue. Let's see if this will work right here. 33CCFF. Let's see if that works. I just don't know. Oh, that worked. It rolls over, rolls over to 100%. Let's see. There we go. Oh, it works fine. There we go. So it works for the cell phone. You would just have to go and do one. You would have to do the same thing for the iPad and the and the um, computer one. So the only way I was able to get the rollover effect, I, I there's no way I'll be able to figure it out over here. There's no way. Uh, was to duplicate the code here and then put the uh, A hover over here and then change the settings. Then for the cell phone or for the computer one, I'd have to do the same thing. I'd have to find the code. Find the code. It's in the what? Oh, I'm in the fluid grid. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not giving me the options for the... Yeah, let me think about this for a moment. Why is it not doing this? No, that's not going to work. Yeah, does it inherit that? Is that what it's inheriting? No, it doesn't work at all now. This one works, though. I don't know. You can... Um, You're just going to have to do trial and error like I was doing. I, I don't have any right or wrong way of doing anything. I do not know. I do not know.